It is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good, his love endures forever, for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today's New Testament reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 22 to 43. It can be found on page 1007 in your few Bibles. This is the Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your, put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, to, said to them Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talatha Kayun, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began walking around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. 
punished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. And this is the word of our Lord. Well, thank you so much for those, those readings. Um, if, the, if, the, if the teens, the sort of 14 to 18s, would like to go to their group, they can do that in my office just there. Um, and now I'm delighted to welcome Geraldine, who's been known to many of you, our church warden, um, who's going to preach to us now. Jesus is calm. He sets out. The crowd, 
who are eager to see more great things, they go with him, pressing about him, probably slowing him down, and then he stops. He's felt something. Energy has drained out of him. Jairus, at this point, must be on the edge of his nerves. He probably wants to shout, don't stop! We've got to be quick! My daughter's ill! The crowds are in the way! My daughter needs you now! He doesn't say that out loud. At least we don't hear that in the, in the text. Time passes. Jesus interacts with the woman. Now he's ready to move on. Oh, but look. Here are men from Jairus' house. They come and they say it's too late. She's dead. What now for Jairus? His faith in this healer. His faith has not been met. The great man has not saved his daughter. Misery. Despair. He's pleaded with him. He had hope. Now it's all gone. He's flat. A piece of him has died. No one wants to end their life, I think, their children. It seems wrong, out of the scheme of things. Then the colleagues and friends around say, Oh, don't bother the teacher anymore. Maybe they're a little bit embarrassed about all the fuss he's making. Dads, how would you be feeling now at this point? But no, Jesus carries on. And those words, don't be afraid. Just believe. At this point, he also says he doesn't want the crowds to follow him. News that the healings were spreading. He knew that his life was in danger. He still had work. He still had work to do on, before his time on this earth was over. At the house, there's commotion, wailing, normal after death. Jesus is laughed at. Laughed at. He says she's sleeping. They laugh at Jesus. But he proves them wrong. And that laughter that was aimed at him was turned to laughter of joy when he commands that young girl to get up. She does so and she walks around. A miracle. He's brought the girl back to life. A blessing. Such joy to this family. He also asked them not to tell others. Which I think was impossible, considering you had all those crowds outside wailing. Who now is sure to know she's alive. Dads, how are you feeling now? Your faith in Jesus is restored. Would you be able to keep that news quiet? I'm just going to pick up three points in that reading. Um, the first one being, Jesus comes in his own time. Sometimes he is delayed. But he answers our requests. He answers our prayers. Not always in the way we expect. Two, even at our lowest points, we should still believe. At the worst point when Jairus thought his daughter was dead, Jesus said, just believe. And then the third point is, not every single action has to be publicised. Not everything has to be put on social media, media. Not every meal has to be photographed. Something you should just need to keep within your own family, close to your own heart. But back to that, say. I looked up in the dictionary, what is a father? So the dictionary says the father is the male parent of a child. Quite basic, I think we know that. Fathering. So if you look up mothering, as in you think of Mother's Day and you think of Mothering Sunday, mothering is the nurturing and raising of a child. That's very nice, isn't it? When you look up fathering, there's two definitions. One, the first one, to provide the sperm that unites the egg to form an embryo. And two, to bring up a child. So mothering, oh, it's lovely, it's nurturing fathers, just provided the seed. We all know that's not true. We looked at the job description earlier, didn't we? Dad, can you pick me up from... That's the taxi driver in you, isn't it? And do you go? Yes, I'm sure you do. It's about keeping our children 
safe, keeping our small children prote protected. In Mark 9, Jesus is talking to the disciples about what's important, and the disciples are arguing about who's greatest. He uses a child to demonstrate that the first shall be last, and if you want to be chosen, you should be servant to all. So that means being servant to our children as well. Welcoming little children. Whoever welcomes these little children welcomes me. For me, I think that's whoever protects little children will get my protection. So what about the banker? Dad! I love this voice I'm putting on. <laughs> Dad! I don't think my son ever made that noise, but Dad! Dad! Can I have 20 pounds to go out with my friends? Dad! Can I have the new dinosaur game for the computer? Dad, can I have the new trainers so I can be the same as my friends? And Luke 11, I'm going to read Luke 11. Fathers, suppose your child asks for a fish. Which of you would give him a snake? Or suppose he asks for an egg. Which of you would give him a scorpion? Even though you are sinners, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, fathers, we give what we can. And maybe it isn't the £20 for the going out with friends, or the £60 or £80 for the new trainers, however much trainers cost these days. We might not be able to provide absolutely everything. But we give love. Fathers give love. And then I come on to my third, slightly more controversial thing. Dad, I want. I want and I want it now. Discipline. There's a lot of controversy in the past where people use the Bible as a means to strongly discipline their children. I'm sure you might have heard, I'm sure you might have, you might have heard the phrase, spare the rod, spoil the child. Actually, that's from Proverbs, and what it actually says is he who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is careful to discipline him. Careful to discipline. Discipline is important, but we're not talking about the rod here. Violence leads to violence. What are we showing our children if all we do is shout at them and then hurt them? Think of you and your bosses. Do you know if your boss came along, shouted at you, and then hit you, would you work harder? Would you toe the line? Probably not. So don't expect that of your children. Discipline? Yes. Not um, balance. But you know, God disciplines us as well, doesn't he? He makes us wait. But our Heavenly Father knows what our needs are, and he provides. It's, and that isn't always what we think. Nothing's changed over the years, has it? The requests might have changed. Requests for time, requests for calling on the wallet or the bank card, and maybe sometimes turning on the dad to turn a line down. Do you? I know my husband would. <laughs> so life as a parent is not easy. The journey is tough. Decisions have to be made and reinforced. Sometimes these choices will not be the same as what our child wants. Think about prayer. Think about what we said earlier. Jesus comes in his own time, and some people are not healed. Fathers, the answer is not, not always to have to say yes and to, to be loved. No is a powerful word. No is a protector. I've just got a small snippet. Um, anybody who knows Horrid Henry, I'm going to try and prove with Horrid Henry. Um, but this is from a book on Harriet Henry called A Guide to Perfect Parents. Perfect parents let you do whatever you want. They let you decide what's for dinner. They never make you eat vegetables. They give you control of the TV remote. They always blame your brothers and sisters whenever there's a quarrel. But how, I 
in your screen. Can you turn your mean, horrible, bossy parents into perfect ones? Just follow simple training. It's all about discipline, rewards, consistency, and setting limits. Wow, it works both ways, according to this book. It's all about consistency and setting limits. Talk. That's important, isn't it? Jesus. He talked in parables. Sometimes the disciples found this hard. They found it hard to link to what was going on in their daily lives. When we look back now at those parables, we've got time. We can study the text. We can pull it apart and find out the meanings. Talk to your children. Sit on the hillsides. Share your food. Share prayer time. Sometimes you will be angry. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, when the disciples fell asleep? Also that time when the children, uh, the parents brought children to Jesus and they pushed them away. Jesus was angry with the disciples. It's okay to be angry, but explain why. Let them know what's wrong and how they can amend it. We heard in our Old Testament reading that God was angry. He's seen the sinful way people have been living, but he promises to restore health and well-being. He promises he will cleanse them of their sin and forgive them for their rebellion. Fathers, forgive. Help your children see the wrong and give them the opportunity of forgiveness and restoration. So thinking back to those points, Jesus will come and be ready and do things in his own time. Dads, do you always come through for your children? Children, do you have the patience to wait? Even at the lowest point, still believe. Parenting is tough. Love is powerful. Even at the lowest point, you might not, might not like what they're doing, but still love your children. And for children, I repeat, even at the lowest point, still believe. So, and again, the third point, not every action has to be publicised. Don't boast, don't show off. Others may be going through a hard time. If you need to shout out praises, shout praises to the, our Lord or our Father. He made us in his image and gave us an abundant world to live in. We are a community now and forever. And we have that task of parenting the land that's been given to us and our families. So fathers, not just the seed and producer of a new life, a role model, a taxi driver, an educator, a friend. So all of you who are fathering, stand up now. Come fathers, stand up. You deserve a round of applause for the good job you're doing. Thank you. Keep up that good work. Just as our Father in Heaven never gives up on us, look to the commandments. Children, honour your father and mother. Listen to them, talk to them, and love one another just as he has loved us. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Geraldine. Lots of, um, lots of very practical advice there. And I guess we'll all have had very different experiences, both in the ways that people have fathered us and, and for those who are fathers in, in the way that we've fathered. And one thing I can assure is that all of us will, will have imperfections. All of us will have made mistakes uh, and, and maybe been hurt in some way by human fathers. But nevertheless, the aspect of fathering that, that Scripture refers to when it talks about God as our Father is to focus on the love, the affirmation, the care, the ideal Father, if you like, uh, that Geraldine was, was speaking about. And so now as we go into a, a time of worship, I'd love for us to, to think about God as, as our Father. 
this image that the scripture uses to talk about his love, his affirmation, his provision for us, and how we are a part of his family if we choose to believe in and follow him. And while we worship, I'd really encourage you to be open to uh, to things that God's Spirit might say. You might find a, a, a Bible verse or, or a picture or something comes to mind as you ask God to reveal more of who He is. Um, so we'll try and create a space after this worship song, maybe to exchange some of those encouraging words, if, um, if you feel you have them. But anyway, would you like to stand up now uh, and we'll sing about our Father God. worshipped, it was almost quite a, a humorous picture. It was of people walking around who were really thirsty and it was pouring with rain, but people were carrying these cups and the cups were upside down. So of course they could hold no water at all. If only they had turned the cups the right way up, then of course people's cups were filled and, and they could drink. And I felt it could be an image sometimes of of just the importance of consciously kind of 
making that space to pause and receive the love of God that's being poured out on, on all of us. But I think it could also be an image sometimes of receiving the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit, of those, particularly of those words of encouragement that sometimes God sends to, to put our cups upright, if you like, to ask uh, God and create space for that. So let's just create a, a space now to see if God wants to bring us uh, encouraging words. So we pray, Lord Jesus, you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit. You'd release your spiritual gifts now. So there may be someone here has a has an image that's just come to mind or a, a scripture or an encouragement and if that's you you might just want to kind of wave your hand i can bring the bring the microphone around to you and, um, no problem if you haven't can receive anything at, at all there are different times that god speaks to different people but what we often find is there's a body as a whole there are often, uh, often at least a few of us. The Lord is here. Spirit, Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Do, do feel free to take a seat now as we, we walk through this liturgy that, that reminds us of the Father's love for us, how he gave his only son to to hide for us, that we might be free and forgiven as, and adopted as, as his own sons ourselves. So Father, you made the world and loved your creation. And you gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we praise you and we bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. And on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. And again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. And in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. And bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, 
we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is a star. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So, Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. And look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are many. We are one Lord, because we all share in one breath. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I ask uh, Geraldine and Anna to, to come now and help me distribute communion. And all who know and love the Lord Jesus are invited to come to this table irrespective of your Christian uh, denomination. Um, if you'd like to see wine as well as bread, then we will have non-alcoholic wine at this corner of the church and normal wine at the other corner of the church. So do you, don't feel any sense of obligation, but if you'd like to receive the wine after receiving the bread, then do, uh, do feel free uh, to do that. And, um, and if for uh, whatever reason you'd just like a blessing rather than receiving communion, then do, do come up as well. We'd be delighted to pray with you.
the Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. So send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. If you'd like to stand now for our final hymn, and we'll be taking out an offering during this hymn, but please don't feel any obligation to go. Jesus, that you would refresh those who, who themselves refresh others, and you give us such wisdom to uh, spend this resource in the service of your kingdom, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. I just want to pray a, a final blessing over us all now. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well, you're all really welcome to stay behind for coffee and a biscuit or something afterwards. Do remember to buy your raffle tickets. If you'd like to be prayed for, do come to the front. I'm sure someone could pray for you. And I um, really hope to chat to as many of you as I can. Thank you.